My name is Joyce Scobie. Um, I have lived all over the place. I was born in Leeds, and then I moved to Harrogate, and then I moved to Scotland, to, uh, to Arran, working at the Atomic Energy Authority, and that's where I met my husband. And then we moved to East Cabride, and then we moved to Straven. And then when we retired, very early retirement, we moved down um, to the Lake District, well, to the Yorkshire Dales. And uh, we were there for 20 years as well, 20 odd years, nearly 30 years there. Then we came back when my husband, is, you know, his um, condition of uh, Alzheimer's was getting worse. So we decided we'd come back to be near the family. My age, I'm a month off 91. And uh, my interests are local history, very much so. Uh, music, very much so. And reading. At one time I did a lot of handwork, knitting and tapestries and things like that, but can't do that now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the 1950s, I worked at the World Industries Research Association in Leeds. And this entailed going round mills, doing um, time studies. It was not really time and motion, it was time studies. And we were very fortunate that we were able to come up to Scotland and work in Ballantyne Mills in March Street, which we thought was very good. When we first came, it was difficult to know where to stay. And so initially I stayed at the Waverley Hotel in a cupboard. I was right at the top floor with a skylight lighting the bedroom and that was all. And um, the Waverley Hotel was the market restaurant, but that's closed now as well. So I stayed there for two or three days whilst we were finding somewhere for to, to stay. And eventually we got this um, Caledonian Road. Uh, there was this... It's The house is still there, but the garden isn't. The garden's all modern houses now. Stayed with this... She probably wasn't all that old. She seemed old. But she was a, a spinster who had obviously been looking after her mother or her father. And um, so we stayed there. I stayed there on my own to begin with, and then one of my uh, uh, helpers came to, as well. Uh, but she wasn't at the full time. Uh, so, but when she was there, I was able to work back shift. She was too young to work back shift. So this used to mean I, I had the whole mornings free, so I was able to go out walking. And, but the main thing, I was actually studying at that time for statistics exams. So it was a, I used to sit along the, on the, one of the bench, benches along the um, river in Hay, Hay Lodge Park, uh, sitting on a bench, doing my problems. <laughs> and um, Haylarch Park, to me, is still one of the most magic places on earth. And so I was able to do a lot of walks. Um, I walked up the Manor Valley, where someone met me at the other end to bring me back. So it was quite a long walk. I walked over the hills to Doik, and I got the bus back. But I've got a photograph of me sat under the old bridge, not the modern one, um, having my sandwiches. And I remember walking along that road because it was so not so quiet in the 50s, there was not much traffic, uh, and I remember smelling honeysuckle for the first time. Another walk was up over the swear, going down over... Um, that's probably the time I went to Doik, actually. And I would, as I was coming back, in the fields there, there was a calf being born. And I was really quite upset because I, thought, I didn't realise that cows could do this, these sort of things on their own. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I walked along the back road to Inalethan, which was a long way. And then, because it's, you walk along the back road and then you have to walk up to Inalethan, which was another good half mile. 
and I got the bus back. Um, I used to go home. I was there for three week, three months, and I used to. I think I got two trips home, and to contact my parents because there were no mobile phones, and uh, there was a telephone box uh, just at the corner facing Springfield Road but at the end at the top of the bridge on the main path there you can actually see the um, tarmac change you can actually see where it was and I used to use that to to phone various friends uh, to walk along Caledonian Road to where I was staying uh, past the station of course and uh, I don't, did I mention about the gooseberries? No. Uh, this old lady, well, she wasn't old. She's probably in her late 40s, early 50s. And uh, a typical spinster of the time, if you see what I mean. You might have to take that out. Um, uh, she was mad keen on horses and she was mad keen on westerns. She went to see um, all the... Cowboys and Indian films she could see that came to the cinema. Uh, she didn't have much idea about cooking. The meals were very, very drab. Uh, even by 1950 standards, when meals were drab. And uh, she didn't like buying milk because she said milk went off because there were no fridges. She didn't have a fridge, you see. Mm -hmm. so. so she used... Um, evaporated milk and she just sort of made a hole, two holes in the tin can lid and um, it went off <laughs> and I didn't like to tell her but Jennifer, the girl I was with she was quite forward she said, you know, this, this milk's off and it would only be half a tin you know, uh, we'd used um, the other station um, in Donkey Field, well, um, I used to use the train the two or three times I went home. Um, I used the train once, I think. Other times, I got the the bus, and I could walk from March Street Mills up onto the Edinburgh Road, and I got the bus then into um, Edinburgh, and then get the train to Leeds. Remembering High Street, I went to the Bank of Scotland. Uh, my money was paid in there. Not that I had very much, because the pay was very... Sm well, in those days, you know, you didn't get very much. Uh, I remember nearby, there was a very expensive shop. Um, it began with a C. I can't remember what it was called. And I bought a skirt there. I managed to save up to buy a skirt. A, a typical tweedy skirt the colours of um, heather, you know, greens and mauves. lasted for years. Where Fat Face is now, and where Edinburgh Woolen Mill was, Ballantyne's had their own shop there. And because I was working at Ballantyne's, even though I wasn't on the staff, we were like to buy things at a discount, and I bought a rug which, in actual fact, I've just donated. To, wow. I took it in for the exhibition, and so they've got it very much washed and matted up, you know, but it's still anybody knowing what they wove in those day, rugs that were did in there. I was wondering what you actually did. What I did? Yeah. Well, it was... Um, we did it in all the different mills. It was called... I can't remember the actual name of it, it wasn't time and motion study because we didn't we didn't test motion, you know, the way people did things. But it was really finding out the distribution of time, what they're doing on the de various looms. So it meant that you a section was pill was picked, and people um, you had a walk round, and you went every time you passed uh, the particular. One that, uh, loom that you were interested in, you made a mark as to what they were doing, whether they were stopped, whether they were mending a, a broken thread, or whether they were, it was got rattling along, um, and also what the 
operative was doing, the weaver was doing, we called, they were called operatives, um, whether she was... Um, it was very, very broad as regards her when she was doing sweet nothing. Um, you know, we just, it was a little thing that just said, unoccupied, I think it was. <laughs> and uh, so you walked around and you, you passed the loom and you wrote down, you, you filled in a, you did it in boxes of five, you know, six mm -hmm. or five. And then you went on to the next uh, loom and you went right round and then you got to the, and then you did it all over again. Oh. And there was usually about, Ten minutes in between each round, and then they'd move that. Now, Jennifer used to do the daytime one, and I did the back shift. Now, the back shift, as far as I remember, went on until seven or eight. But if you look at the information that we got from Mark Street Mills when they closed, they closed earlier than that. But I remember walking. It wasn't in the dark, but it was. July, August, September, mm. but I remember um, walking when it was quite, you no, know, because my mm. father was unhappy that I was walking around the streets of people's, he didn't realise how, <laughs> and, you know. Genteel we are. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> so uh, that that was um, what we did, and then when he got back to, um, he got back to Leeds and in the office, and to the lab, and... Um, and then, you know, analysed it all so that eventually could come out with a report saying how much time they... Um, oh, and then, of course, it varied because a loom would be on one kind of cloth and one kind of uh, wool. And then a couple of weeks later, it might be changed to another one. So you had to do that one again because to see how they're compared between... Right, um, different runs. Mm -hmm. yeah. I worked in Leeds at a place called the Wool Industry Research Association um, in a big old house called Torridon. So it was never called Wool Industry Research Association, it was always just called Torridon and everybody knew what you meant. And um, you, I went round all the different mills in the West Riding, in the, you know, the West Riding Woolen in, uh, Woolen area. Huddersfield, Halifax, uh, being, you know, sort of mm. all round, Bratley. Uh, and you'd be probably be about a month at a time doing, you know, uh, on a group. Um, it was, well, why we came to Scotland, I don't know, because the Research Association had a branch in Gala Shields, mm -hmm. which was, the, you know, now the uh, college. Oh. But it was actually, in, and there was a guy there called Alec Ray, and he was in charge there, but he, used, he kept an eye on us, and, you know, we had, uh, you know, keeping it up to... Were the 50s fabulous? Well, it was difficult, because the 40s were hell on earth. They were worse than the war. The later, at the beginning of the 50s, were worse than... Before mm -hmm. the war, but then, then during the war, you know, once the mm -hmm. war finished, things were a lot tighter and everything was so strict. And um, it wasn't fabulous, it, it gradually got better. So, that by the time it got to the late 50s, things were improving. I mean, at the, at the end of the late 50s, I was able to, I was able to, in the 57, I left home and you know, had a flat of my own. And in 59, I was able to, you know, buy a car on HP, of course. <laughs> um, so things did improve. Right. But, and please, things were more cheerful, but things were very miserable in, at the beginning of the 50s. Nobody was... Um, you made an effort. Right. So fabu we got more fabulous as time went on. <laughs> Thank you very much.